I was recently lucky enough to spend seven weeks in a city called Datong. And Datong is located in the north of China. It's about 300 kilometers west of Beijing. And it's got an amazing history that stretches thousands of years and even has a couple of World Heritage sites. But in China, Datong is known for its coal. And it's called the capital of coal. And in 2005, it was actually ranked the third filthiest city in China. And it had the country's worst air quality. But what's really, what's really special about Datong is the transformation that has actually undergone in the last eight years. During this time, they've shut down many of their mines. They've rebuilt much of their ancient city, attracting tourism. And they've spent billions of dollars on renewable energy manufacturing. And the transformation has worked so well that Datong is now ranked 47th out of 120 cities in China, and it continues to improve. I'm not actually here to talk to you about Datong. I'm here to talk to you about why I was in Datong. I was actually in Datong for the world's largest student-led sustainable buildings competition called the Solar Decathlon. And I was there as the project manager of the first ever Australian team, a team from the University of Wollongong and Te Filawara. And we were there, and we competed against 20 other teams from around the world. Now, if you haven't heard of the Solar Decathlon, which I think a lot of you already have, it requires students to develop inspiring, cost-effective, and beautiful net zero energy homes. But the competition has added, added complexity, and then we actually have to build, test, and display these homes. And in this case, we have to do it in China. So our team entered the Solar Decathlon with a unique design concept. Our design concept was based around transforming our houses into sustainable homes by retrofitting. Now, a number of people over the last two years have actually asked me, why would you retrofit? And to actually explain this, you need to know a few, thing about, a few things about Australia's housing. For starters, Australia's houses contribute directly 13% of our carbon emissions, and these continue to rise. The share of houses with whole house heating systems is also continuing to rise, and energy from space cooling is increasing at a rate of 16% per annum. The number of household appliances is also increasing, and energy use from appliances has been rising at 5% per annum for the last 15 years. And again, this continues. It's also a wide, widely known fact that Australians are building and living in the world's largest homes. And a lot of us here would probably think that's a good thing. I mean, I like living in a large home, but it comes at a really stiff environmental price. Larger homes take more resources to build, and they consume significantly more energy during their, uh, during their lifetime. And these homes have grown in such a, at such a rate that they negate almost all of the positive energy efficiency benefits that we get from energy efficiency programs such as BASICS and an improved Australian building code. Now, the Solar Decathlon actually seeks to rectify a lot of the things that I've just talked about. And it does that by developing homes that reduce the operational energy of their homes to zero. And this is fantastic, but the problem is that most of the other teams, they build new homes. And new homes only account for less than 2% of our building stock every year. So in reality, we actually have a huge opportunity trying to fix the existing 8.6 million homes that we have and that a lot of people aren't doing a lot about. And these these 8.6 million homes, a lot of them are so poorly built that they're actually built inside out. But I'll talk about that in a moment. So our entry, the Illawarra Flame, demonstrates how you can fix some of these existing homes. And it does that by demonstrating how you can retrofit a fibro home and make it a truly beautiful and sustainable net zero energy house. Now, I say demonstration because we actually built this home from the ground up, but it was in replica of a, of a traditional fibro home. And we did this due to the need to actually transport the home all the way to China and to rebuild it in less than 10 days. But what's really, what's really cool about us actually taking a home to China is that we're actually continuing a great Wollongong tradition of shipping entire houses around the world. This is a picture of a, of a Dutch immigrant that came here in the 1950s, and he actually brought a prefabricated home all the way from Europe and rebuilt it here in Wollongong. So the first step in our transformation of the Illawarra Flame was to actually understand what a sustainable home actually is. And a truly sustainable home is one that produces more energy on site than it consumes. It minimizes the amount of water that it uses. It minimizes its embodied energy and is made from sustainable materials. So that means not using materials that we know are toxic, such as lead, mercury, PVC, formaldehyde. And also means sourcing materials that are produced locally, so minimizing the embodied energy through transport. Now, the home must also be affordable, functional, and beautiful. It must have a long lifetime and be durable. And it must, pro must provide a healthy space for its occupants. 
And in an ideal world, you'd also be able to produce a lot of the food that you, that you eat on site. Think of all the energy that you can actually save by not importing pineapples from Thailand or wheat from Western Australia, but actually consuming what you eat on your site. So to create a home that actually generates more energy than it, than it consumes, there's two things that you need to do. The first is to reduce the amount of energy that you, that you consume, and the second is to generate electricity on site through renewables such as photovoltaics. And there's three things that everyone in this room can do right now to your houses to reduce your energy consumption. The first is to fit LED lights. The second is to convert to solar hot water. And the third is to use efficient appliances such as induction cooktops. The next step is to then uh, decrease your heating and cooling loads in your house, which can account for up to 40% of your total energy use. And you can do that by improving your building envelope. And a building envelope is essentially just the outer shell of your home. And we did this by pulling the asbestos uh, fibro off our house and then insulating the floor, wall and ceiling with uh, bulk insulation and a rigid board uh, foam. And by using those materials and doing it to those surfaces, we're actually able to make the home airtight. Airtightness is essentially about um, removing leaks and drafts that come into your home and negating the need to actually continually reheat or recondition the air that comes into that house. A typical fibro house in Australia would have an air change rate per hour of around 30 at 50 pascals, and that compares to a really well-built European home that has an air change rate of less than one. So we're way behind the eight ball. But it means we have a long way that we can improve as well. So fixing your air tightness in your home can be as simple as fixing uh, seals to your doors and windows, that sort of thing. Now the next step in improving your building envelope is then looking at your windows. And windows are typically the Achilles heel of a building, particularly if you have well insulated walls. So in our case, we actually removed the single glazed windows and we replaced them with well sealed, timber frame, double glazed units. We also modified the external shading around the house to minimize the amount of summer sun that comes into the home while maximizing the amount of winter sun that can come into the house, which is good passive design principle. Now we also came up with some more innovative ways to reduce your, our energy consumption. We developed a, uh, a solar assisted heating and ventilation system that combined a photovoltaic thermal system with a thermal battery made of phase change material and a traditional air conditioning unit. Now the photovoltaic thermal system produces electricity from a series of integrated solar panels and it produces thermal energy by extracting heat from those solar panels by drawing air beneath it. So we can use that electricity to offset our home's energy consumption and we can use that hot and cold air to also condition the home. Now the thermal battery works by essentially offsetting the demand and the supply so we can actually store all that thermal energy for use when the sun's not out, for instance, at night and in winter. Now, we also came up with another really cool idea, and that was, uh, it was a product that was designed to retrofit thermal mass to the inside of a timber frame building. And thermal mass is essentially any dense product that has the ability to hold a lot of heat. So things like brick, cement, and water. And thermal mass is really important in driving down energy consumption, and it works by stabilizing the temperature in your home. So remember when I talked to you about the inside-out homes? I was referring to, double, sorry, to brick veneer homes, which are the predominant building type in Australia. And good passive design actually has thermal mass on the inside of the home and insulation on the outside, not the other way around, where it can, when it's on the outside, it can actually absorb all of the sun's energy and release it into the home during nighttime in summer, which can be incredibly uncomfortable. So we didn't want to make this mistake. So we developed a product that was made from 80% recycled terracotta roof tiles, 15% recycled glass bottles. So all those stubbies that you all drink every weekend, you don't have to throw them in the bin any longer. You can save them and put them into your walls. But we actually, uh, we held those, those glass bottles and the terracotta together with a cement product that was, it was amazing. It had zero embodied emissions. So it was, really, it, was a, it was a great eco product. We were then able to position that thermal mass within the house so that it gained a lot, all the winter sun that we could and it got no summer sun, so it was fantastic. It also added a great visual warmth to the home. So at this point, you're probably wondering, does this actually work? Is this all hogwash? Can I do this to my own house? Those sorts of things. And I think what's really important or, and really special about the solar decathlon competition is that we actually had to test this house. And we tested it across 10 different criteria, hence the name decathlon. And these were split into five subjective categories and five measured categories. So the five subjective contests were things like architecture, engineering, and market appeal. And these were judged by a panel of international experts that came from around the world and went through every single home. We then had five measured contests. So these were things like energy balance, where we monitored how much energy we produced and how much we consumed. 
We had a thermal comfort contest where we had to maintain the temperature within our home between 23 and 25 degrees and humidity less than 60%. And we had to maintain those conditions while we also had an entertainment contest where we actually had to hold a series of dinner parties and movie nights. And we actually got students from other teams to come to these movie nights and dinner parties and they had to judge us on how well our home actually functioned and well everything, if everything was well integrated. We also had to wash and dry clothes every day. We had to turn the lights and telly on and off, fix periods. We had to put the dishwasher on. And after all of these contests, we actually proved that the home did work. And the home worked so well that we actually placed first in five of the 10 contests, and we placed second in three of those. And overall, we actually won the Solar Decaf on China 2013. And in the process, we became the... <laughs> Thank you. In the process, we actually got the highest score ever out of any solar decathlon to date. But I think what's really more important than that is the fact that we proved that you can retrofit a home and you can retrofit it to the highest possible environmental standard. So now that we know it all works, each of us needs to actually get out there and we need to have a crack at this. We need to make all of our fibros sexy. We need to reverse the, the trend of the inside out homes. And we need to transfer, transform all of our existing houses into sustainable homes, just like Datong transformed its filthy city into a beautiful city. We need a culture shift. We need to shift away from oversized homes. We need a culture shift um, away from needless consumption. And we need to start demanding sustainable materials and refusing those that we know are toxic. We need to start pressuring our government to legislate incentives to make retrofitting viable, like they've done in many other countries. So ladies and gentlemen, I know you all thought the housework was finished, but the reality is you actually all need to get out there and you need to start doing some more to your homes. Thank you.